Hi guys and welcome to another video, the first video in fact, in our new series of vlogs called the Coastal Catalogue. And in this new series of vlogs we are going to be exploring history along the coast, specifically the northwest coast of England. Uh, potentially we may go further afield uh, once the green shoots of recovery deal with this wretched cost of living crisis. And for this first edition we are looking at the mystery of the rock cut graves. It's an Anglo-Saxon mystery. This is St Peter's at Hesham. And we've also got a bit of Viking. In here is the Hogback Stone. Like everything nowadays, this amazing Anglo-Saxon church is all locked up. We are disbarred. The 10th century Viking Hogback Stone resides somewhere in here. We'll try and have a look through the window to take a look to it. Otherwise, we'll have to rely on some sort of overlay. I don't think this is going to work. I think we'll need to put up some sort of uh, overlay so you can take a look to it. Bit annoying that we can't get into this incredible Anglo-Saxon church to see the incredible Hogback Stone. But the good news about this location is that there are actually two Anglo-Saxon churches and we're not going to have the same problem getting in to the next one. Follow me. Now, there is a much more straightforward way to get to the objective of our next objective, but this is going to be more exciting going this way, more exciting for the, for the vlog. And this is not just a cheap stunt for courting popularity on YouTube. I think the point I'm trying to make is that there does appear to be, it's very clearly, an old route that links St Peter's to our next location. Uh, so it's one of the things I want to explore, the relationship between St Peter's and where we're off to next. There's definitely a route here. It's a bit tricky, especially with this tripod in the way. This wall obviously has been blocked in across at some stage, but it is a route and I'm going to follow it. The things I do for you guys... <sighs> Uh, we'll overdub all that uh, grunting with some music or something. Very tempting to explore that uh, evocative looking cliff uh, path, but our destination is through here. I don't know why I'm being mysterious about our next location, because I've already told you we're here to look at rock cut graves. And here it is, St Patrick's. It's a pretty evocative place and uh, none of the experts can really agree on exactly when it was built. Uh, there's uh, the 6th, 7th, 8th and 9th century are quoted as its origin. But what I can tell you is that uh, archaeological excavations have revealed that the site here has been inhabited in use for over 12,000 years. Whichever of those centuries it was built in, it's pretty obvious from this up here that it is Anglo-Saxon. And in a total break of continuity, I'll come back through that door the other way so you can have a look inside to it. And in another jarring edit cut, we're now inside, it's pretty small, as you can see. So they don't know whether any form of praying or that sort of malarkey actually happened in here or whether it all happened out on the cliff edge outside. Maybe this was just a place for shelter. Who, who knows? Well, certainly not the experts. And anyway, I'm going to go through this doorway yet again. I'm really enjoying going through an Anglo-Saxon doorway. Whatever it was they got up to inside St. Patrick's Chapel, the real action did take place outside. Let's go and have a look over here. Totally unique in the UK. Cut into the natural rock at the western side of St Patrick's Chapel, we have these incredible six rock-cut graves. And as well as the graves, there are these 
interesting sockets uh, down here, which we'll get down and have, have a look at. And these are believed to have been, obviously, I think it's fairly obvious really, these were for wooden crosses to mark the graves. They really are unique. There is nowhere else in the UK where you'll see anything like this, six rock cut graves. It's a mystery really as to how they work. You can see they're pretty small. Uh, so there is a view that they didn't have bodies in them. They had bones, bits of uh, dead, obviously, people uh, in, in them with the cross line of crosses there facing out to the uh, sea. Over here, there are, at the back of the chapel, there's another two. And these two over here are even smaller. They're really tiny. There is a view that they might have been for miners, for babies, Ugh! but I don't think so. I think they just had bones uh, put in them. There's another one of those uh, holes for a cross there. Um, the interesting thing for me is what, how they were covered, uh, whether there was a sort of can put on top, uh, but there's something over here which might give us the answer to that. Possibly they could have had something like this uh, on top of them or, or something. Right, time to address the elephant in the room, the name, St. Patrick's Chapel. We've not long had St. Patrick's Day. <sighs> um, there are, of course, stories that this location was established. The chapel here was established by St. Patrick, that famous Romano Briton who was kidnapped and uh, taken to Ireland and then converted them all to Christianity and uh, dealt with snakes and, and things like that. There is absolutely no evidence whatsoever to uh, suggest that uh, St. Patrick was ever actually here. But that doesn't stop some people insisting that he was. I'm gonna do the Anglo-Saxon door again. Yes, I really enjoy that. Yes, the arguments on the internet, mainly obviously, uh, claiming that St. Patrick was involved with the establishment of this site are really ridiculous. And they include things like uh, the sheer number of roads in the area that are St. Patrick's this, St. Patrick's that. Like St. Patrick's Close on a 1970s council estate is any form of evidence. An expert's board here giving you some sort of idea of what it uh, might have been like. These are the rock cut graves here with the crosses and the chapel you can see uh, had plaster on it which uh, has been confirmed. I like this one as well you've got uh, the crosses there but if you look up here there's a little boat out there in Morecambe Bay. St Patrick's Chapel was consolidated I think it was in 1903 and this sort of tile work that you can see here, tile if I say it properly, is part of that. Whether St Patrick was ever really here, we'll never know. Um, we're certainly not going to rely on the name of St Patrick's close uh, to confirm that he was. He probably wasn't. Nonetheless, this is still a very significant Anglo-Saxon site in the UK and a great way to start our coastal catalogue. I've been stopped six times today whilst out filming this vlog to ask if I'm involved in some form of vintage pageant or vintage production. Uh, I presume that's uh, because of my wearing apparel as the great William Hartnell would have said. It seems that uh, nowadays conformity is expected. There's a lot of people about uh, getting in the way of my vlogging so I thought I'd just come down here to the uh, beach to talk a little bit about what we do know in terms of the site. At the end of the uh, Roman period the area was uh, settled by Romano uh, Celts but very quickly I believe in the by the time you get to the 500s the Angles who invaded the country from the east uh, had uh, arrived and then in the 700s maybe the 600s 
but certainly by the 700s, the Vikings were here as well, and thus that hogback stone. There, I've done it. I've thrown a stone into the sea. Vloggers always have to do that. Uh, I've seen loads of them throwing stones into the sea on vlogs on YouTube. I hope you've enjoyed the first edition of the Coastal Catalogue. Over the coming weeks, months, years, if it's successful, we've got the broadest spectrum of history to visit on the coast. Going right back to, certainly we've got some Bronze Age, I think, planned, right the way up to the modern age, if we can find something interesting to talk about in this most soulless of times. And Coastal Vlogs also always have to have a shot or two like that. Ah, the camera's over there now. Um, we've sorted out the endings. The endings are going to be fine in this new uh, series. So please like, subscribe. We've got loads of great content coming up uh, through the course of the year. And we'd like to see you enjoying it as well. Until next week, stay tuned. That actually worked.